So far, we've only been looking at halogenating alkanes, but if we have an alkene in a molecule, we have an allylic position with an allylic hydrogen. And we've talked about radical stability, and we know that this allylic hydrogen is the weakest CH bond in the molecule. We also have an allylic hydrogen over here on the methyl group, but this would be primary allylic versus secondary allylic, so this one's a little bit weaker. What this means is when this reacts with a bromine atom, that's the hydrogen that's going to be removed because that is the weakest bond. And that would give us this radical. And that is a resonance stabilized allylic radical. So then if we translate this into our radical bromination reaction, let's take this molecule, react it with bromine and heat, and you might then expect to get the bromination product. Maybe you expected that. But that's not the actual product you get. And maybe some of you are already thinking why we may get a different product. In fact, what the actual product is, is this dibromoalkane. So the problem is something you already learned. Remember that if you add bromine to a double bond, bromine adds across to that double bond. And the addition of bromine to the double bond is faster than the radical halogenation. There is a way around this problem, however. We can use a different reagent. Our solution to this problem is to use a reagent known as NBS. And what this does is instead of flooding the reaction with a bunch of bromine, this provides a steady but very low concentration of bromine to the solution. Let me show you the structure of NBS and then we'll see how it provides the Br2. Here's NBS, it's called N-bromosuccinamide. And what will happen is when this is in the presence of a molecule of HBr, and when we look at the mechanism, um, of the halogenation we're going to find where HBr is produced. So the halogenation will produce a molecule of HBr and what that will do is react with the NBS and when it does so the hydrogen from HBr ends up on the nitrogen and then the two bromines come together to give Br2. So for every molecule of HBr that's produced in the propagation, a molecule of Br2 is formed. Before we look at the mechanism, let me just show you one example of how this reaction would be written. Let's say we have this alkene, and we would write NBS, and then we need an initiator, which could be light or heat. From there, you want to find your allylic positions, as long as they have hydrogen. You have two allylic positions, but in this case they're equivalent, so you really only need to consider one. And upon reaction with NBS, we'll get the allylic bromide as the product. Like all of our radical reactions, the mechanism is going to involve three main steps initiation, propagation, and termination. So let's start with the initiation. Initiation is where the weakest bond in the system is broken. We have Br2 around, and that is from the NBS. Just a small amount of Br2. Once we hit that with lighter heat, 
that's going to break that bond and you'll get two bromine atoms. Next is the propagation. The first step of the propagation is where the bromine atom abstracts a hydrogen and it abstracts the weakest the hydrogen from the weakest CH bond. So that will be our allylic radical. We'll take that electron and that will pair out here with an electron from the hydrogen and then we put a single electron on the carbon. Now we've formed our radical and HBr. Well guess what? That HBr is going to react with the NBS to give us the Br2 needed for the next step. From there, now that we have a molecule of bromine, that can react with the radical, like this. There's our product, and then we've also formed a bromine radical. And we know that that bromine radical can then go back up and do another round of the propagation. So this is the key part where we get our product formed. Step three, which we have to include, isn't so much productive, but it is important. It's the termination. This could be any two radical species coming together to give a product. Uh, let's just keep it simple. We'll draw one termination possibility. If two bromine radicals come together, and give Br2. That's a termination step.